Welcome everyone. You're listening to FarmCast for the Community. I'm Dr. Tim Brown, your host, and I represent University of Georgia's College of Pharmacy. I'm the Director of Interprofessional Education there, and one of the things that we do is we reach out to the community and try to educate them about what's going on, not only with their medications, but also how pharmacists play a role in their community with regard to their health and safety. I have Dr. Patrick Chansey with me again today. He is from Chansey Drugs. He is the Clinical Service Director there in Southern Georgia. They have uh, multiple stores. He's a third generation pharmacist. And a reminder that he's also an alumni and one of our own, a 2017 graduate of UGA. How you doing, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me back. Are you getting excited now as we talk about sports revving back up for the fall? I just got my notice for football tickets. I bet your podcast, you guys are already planning what you want to do with your football podcast, right? Well, we're, we're still trying to go strong, too, even, even amidst all this. The, the Calling the Dogs podcast is, uh, is, is, is still moving. Good for you. I, you know, I love the fact that people are continuing to live life, even though we've sort of changed our normal. Um, one of the things that I, we talked to last time we spoke is kind of access to, pro, access to medications and how, you, how the stores are working around that. And also, I guess for lack of a better term, consolidation of kind of moving your medications all under one roof. Um, what are some of the questions as, as you've been out there in the community as a pharmacist? And my guess would be a lot of folks rely on you. What kind of questions are you hearing from patients with regard to what's going on, what they need to be concerned about? What are they talking about with COVID-19 when they come into your stores? Well, the first and the, the easiest thing is, is, are you open? We get that, we get that quite a bit. Uh, and obviously, uh, pharmacy is uh, under the, the essential umbrella. Uh, and so we are, we are very open and uh, are operating our, our normal hours, and, and most places are. Um, so pharmacy is open. And then the next biggest question is, can I get my medication? Uh, is, are my medications in stock? Uh, mm. And right now we are not seeing any shortages, uh, major shortages across the board. Um, but that is a real major uh, question right now. And, and, and so, but we're not seeing any, any major shortages. There were some initial buy, buy ups of, of drugs, uh, but the wholesalers have put a pretty, pretty good stop to that. So let me ask the question I think everybody wants to know then. I mean, as a, I myself have rheumatoid arthritis, and for years I was on hydroxychloroquine, I mean, which is now Plaquenil, and I think it's been the media a great deal. I had heard the other day that we're seeing shortages for people who truly need it, those people with lupus and rheumatoid and those things. Are you saying that we've put sort of barriers in place now and people are able to keep it on their shelves for those who really need it, that have a chronic need, not just COVID patients who are in the hospital, but our, our people that live in the community that have lupus and rheumatoid arthritis as well. Yeah, absolutely. And so initially when uh, the president uh, got it on the podium and, and said that, uh, that hydroxychloroquine was a possible uh, therapy for, uh, for COVID-19, uh, needless to say, it was gone uh, almost instantly from the whole. So there was some of that being it bought up and then uh, some places as well. Uh, some wholesalers are already, were already putting up or the government was going in and taking uh, making sure that they weren't selling any of it to, to put uh, some parameters around it. Uh, but now what we're seeing is that uh, the wholesalers are getting more of it in and they have ramped it up. Uh, hydroxychloroquine was never planning on being this popular, uh, right. and has, but we do have uh, quite a few patients that take it and need it. Uh, they, they are pro it's proven to be very uh, efficacious in our rheumatoid arthritis patients, and that's what we see mostly. Uh, that's what we're using it for. And so um, initially, we had some uh, some prescribers that were prescribing uh, crazy amounts for um, for whatever the reason was. And so we obviously were not filling those uh, prescriptions. Uh, we wanted to, because right now we don't really know how it impacts COVID-19. A lot of it's theoretical, but there are studies being done right now. But at this moment, uh, we want to make sure that our patients, that we know that it takes care of them, they get that. And so we're putting those parameters in place, but these wholesalers are allocating. So we're only able to get so much at a time. And, uh, but we are seeing that it is still there and we're just putting a lot of parameters have been put in place to make sure that we don't run out. So that's good to hear. Really good to hear. I know that when I talked with doctors Bland, Jones and Chastain recently, they talked about hydroxychloroquine really being used much more when people are admitted to the hospital with a positive, a positive test. And it's not really need to be used preventively or to store at home or things like that. And so it's good to hear that we sort of wrap some structure around that so people who do need it right now do have access. But I guess the other thing that I was hearing from a couple of my uh, colleagues that I work with who are parents was, you know, there's a fever associated with COVID-19 and cough and those kinds of things. 
What are you seeing when it comes to over-the-counter medications? Are we still okay with cough and cold products, you know, even Tylenol with regard to helping break fever? Um, are you able to still have those on the shelves as well? As of now, we are. Uh, we're, we're not having uh, too many issues. They're, they're kind of putting some similar parameters in place uh, for, for some of these products, uh, but we aren't seeing a, a, a two major shortage right now, but we're not getting as much as we used to. Obviously, a lot of patients, a lot of it was bought up quickly, um, but we are talking to patients and trying to be a little more intentional saying, okay, what do you have going on? Um, what do you have at home now? And then also trying to figure out what we can do best to, to, to get you the right product, because there is a lot of conversation ra- uh, going around around NSAIDs and uh, so your ibuprofen and naproxen and, and those kinds of products. Uh, so we want to talk to our patients and find out what the, what the needs are because not everybody, COVID or no COVID, nope, not everyone needs to take Tylenol and not everyone needs to take uh, ibuprofen or, or Motrin or, uh, to, for whatever those needs are. So we really need to be intentional uh, about having those conversations. That's a really good point. You know, we sort of t- started this conversation with the fact that it'd be great if people kind of kept their medication home in one area or sort of one family, if you will. So if you know people and you know what's going on with them, are you always, or do you sometimes give out advice on how to buy an over-the-counter medication? Like if I walked in and said, listen, I've got a stuffy nose, do you kind of guide me to the path that I need to be on? Um, I'm just kind of wondering if you have time to do that as a pharmacist and how you're now handling it since people can't necessarily walk in the store themselves. Well, and the nice thing right now is, is all of our workflow is really going through uh, our drive through or going out to our patients. And so a lot of these products uh, we're actually seeing are coming in front of us where they normally might not be. And so we're kind of using this, uh, especially for like our MedSync patients when we call them and they say, hey, I need this uh, over-the-counter product delivered to me as well. Um, so we're kind of looking at all their prescription medications and then also any over-the-counter products that they may have and really doing a, a, a good assessment of saying, does this make sense for what they have going on? Uh, and we can have, like I said, if, we, if they're in the drive through and we have a, a long line and uh, they're getting an over-the-counter the product that I may have questions about, um, I may get them to pull over and uh, pull into one of our parking spots and I go out there and talk to them and find out really what's going on uh, to make sure that they're getting uh, the right product. and. Uh, because even over-the-counter products, they still, uh, they're still drugs. They're still medications, and so uh, they have side effects and they have consequences. So um, just because it's out there doesn't mean it's safe in all scenarios. Well, you know, now that you bring that up, I think, I think the other thing is people love herbals or all-natural products. And I think that's another misnomer is they're not drugs either. But the three that have been in the news a lot lately have been vitamin C, zinc, and uh, echinacea, I believe. Tell me a bit about those. Are they flying off the shelves or are people using them uh, with your advice or are they even popular at all? So we have seen an uptick in uh, people uh, buying kind of what you would say some, some home remedies, if you will, uh, some more uh, herbal supplements, uh, whatever. We're seeing a, a wide variety, but those are definitely have been asked about because zinc has been brought up a, a good bit. Um, I always encourage patients to, uh, like say, I, I want to talk to them about what they, like so they looking at their drug list and making sure that this makes sense for them. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a proponent of over-the-counter supplements, that good over-the-counter supplements from good trusted companies. Uh, and so we like to do our research on those as well. But uh, there is no, I can, I can safely say right now, there is no over-the-counter uh, a supplement cocktail that's going to protect you from COVID-19. Uh, there are some, some medications and some supplements that can, uh, that may be help, able to boost your immune system uh, and, and give you a, a better chance of, of fighting, but they're not going to stop it and they're not going to prevent you from getting it. It's not, doesn't pr- pr- provide you some kind of shield that keeps you from getting, uh, getting the infection. So uh, it's, that can be an added uh, benefit if it makes sense with your drug regimen, but uh, don't use this as a, as a shield thinking that it's going to protect you and, and give you a false sense of security. I think that's a really good point. I think for me, when I walk in, I'm overwhelmed with that sort of that medication aisle for cough and cold and those kinds of things. But I think the other side of that coin is to know that now that I can talk to my pharmacist and ask a question about this. It's not just about my prescriptions. It's about natural products especially right now, as we all need to stay as healthy as possible, um, because we're finding out that people who are immune suppressed or at high risk, some of these herbs or natural products can have that effect as well. So going back and forth, tell me a bit about 
when you talk about those products and everything going on, there's a, there was a trial out this morning or a study out this morning talking about only about 50% of people take their medication every day, all the time, even without all this COVID going on. But now with this going on and people furloughed and their finances are difficult, those kinds of things, are you also helping people find a way to afford their medications or ways to help them, if you will, reduce the cost, whether it be finding a generic or finding a program? Are you doing that as well as a pharmacy uh, in your pharmacy roles? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we're looking at uh, any, and this is kind of in our normal workflow, anytime we see a, a high dollar uh, come through something that's maybe not typical, uh, we immediately stop the presses and say, okay, what's going on here? Is this coming out of insurance? Is there a coupon available? Whatever the case may be. So we're always looking for ways. And a lot of times too, our cash price sometimes may be uh, cheaper than what the insurance is kicking back as a copay. And so if we see something that's uh, kind of outlandish uh, or, or kind of raises a red flag, we will uh, make sure that we talk to the patient about that and look at some alternatives. Sometimes the insurance will prefer a different product in that same drug class, whatever the case may be. So we're always doing that, especially now with, uh, with basically everything that's going, we were doing that before. And it's, if anything, it's only ramped up and making sure that we're keeping everything as affordable as possible. Uh, because you mentioned it earlier now, more than ever, it's, it's vital that our patients are taking these medications and, and getting them, uh, in, in often and making sure they're not, they're not running low. So don't be afraid to ask your pharmacist or the ph people working at the pharmacy for coupons or copay cards or alternative medications, if you will, to reduce their cost. I hate to see people not get something because it falls outside the price range they're comfortable with, especially if it's for asthma, COPD, diabetes, all the things we've talked about, because those people are at increased risk if they have those diseases as well. Um, so Dr. Chansey, you've been working hard. You guys have been innovative and creative and You've been working your way through it. If you had to give three pearls to the folks out there about pharmacy, what's going on with pharmacists and also their medications, what would it be? Well, and the first thing I do want to say is making sure that we are taking, we each have our own responsibility to make sure that we're taking social distancing and all of these measures seriously, making sure you're washing your hand. Hand sanitizer has been the real hot topic, but really, making sure you have hand soap available at home. Soap and, uh, and water is the best thing to, to fight this and making sure anytime you're, I'm not going to sit here and tell you don't touch your face because I've touched my face while we've been sitting here, um, but it, making sure that we are washing our hands and, and doing everything to protect ourselves and our, our loved ones and keeping our homes disinfected. We're doing that at the pharmacy. Um, now we're actually wearing masks in the pharmacy to protect each other and making sure we're doing that the right way. Uh, the next thing is, uh, is making sure that you're not neglecting other aspects of your life, um, making sure that you're sleeping, exercising, uh, and, and doing those things, those, those make sure we're doing that self-help and making sure we're keeping ourselves the right way. So if you're having issues sleeping uh, or if you're having um, need some guidance on how to eat properly, uh, talk to your pharmacist. Your pharmacy can help you there. Uh, we have a lot of natural products that can help with sleeping and make sure because now Sleeping is one of the best medicines to make sure our immune system is built up. So please talk to your pharmacist about that and making sure you have all the medications that you need. Um, and obviously adherence and making sure that you're staying uh, adherent to your medications and, and that your loved ones are staying adherent as well. So talk to your pharmacy, be proactive. Uh, don't wait on somebody to come to you because medication, uh, it may have been put on the back burner, but I encourage you make sure you keep it at the forefront. Hmm. So stay clean, be well, and take your meds. <laughs> uh, that's, I think that might be the best way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true parent. Good for you. So <laughs> thanks so much for joining us today, Dr. Chansey. I know you're busy and I know taking time out of your day also takes time away from your patients. So I really appreciate you doing this podcast with us and talking to us. Um, good luck down in Southern Georgia and uh, all the best with you. Stay well. It's good seeing you again, young man. Absolutely. Y'all uh, do the same and uh, go dogs.